Yeah. Learn French. <laughs> we are working on it. Right. But the travel, again, the travel has made it difficult. I know, I know. One minute you're trying to work on your French and the next minute you're in Italy. Right. <laughs> and it's like, oh, shit, you know. So is, is your Dumble ready to go in Europe? Can, can you change the voltage for it? That was done a long, long time ago. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you have no problems with it at all, huh? No, a Alexander put in a switch, you know, so that I could, there's five different power, you know, <laughs> transformers there. <laughs> so um, I still don't have the Dumble in Europe yet. Uh, I'm, I've only got uh, my 100 watt little Walter and the 50 watts going over soon. But I'm just sort of waiting uh, with the Dumble. I'm just waiting just to, not because I don't think I'm going to live in Europe, but it's nice to have it here. Yeah. And I'm also, you know, kind of moving towards lower wattage amplifiers, just a little less loud. And the Dumble wants to be loud, you know. Yeah. And this is why I've started using the little Walter amplifiers, because they, they still have that kind of clarity and headroom, not quite as well, but that's only because they're not as loud. <laughs> you know? I mean, they're 100, it's, you know, one is 100 watts, the other is 50, and it's plenty loud. Yeah. If I need it. But it just, it doesn't throw, you know, as dramatically as, as the Dumble does. Yeah, that thing oh. reads really nice. I've been close to it. <laughs> oh, yeah, have you? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, very close. Tell me about that. Um, I Well, I, I, I met you out in uh, Portland, Oregon. Uh -huh. Recently? Um, probably about 20 years, uh, 25 years ago, probably. Recently? Yeah, well, yeah, for, <laughs> yeah, for, for us, yeah. <laughs> and um, and uh, I, I mean, I, I told you to turn it up, and you go, you don't know what you're wishing for. It. <laughs> but it was, it was incredible, you know, it was, it was really incredible. Um, yeah. You know, I, I saw you with Miles Davis, too, actually. Mm -hmm. Wow, right yeah. on. Yeah. Come here. Um, Where was that? In Massachusetts at Great Woods. Okay. Uh, Spyro Gyro is opening up. Now, I never would have seen Spyro Gyro if it wasn't for the fact that Miles was sitting on the headline. <laughs> nor, nor would I. <laughs> yeah. But I remember that. Yeah. I think yeah. we might have done three shows with them or something on that that little run. I'm not sure. Yeah. And I do remember seeing them. And just that was it was such a wonder to me because it, it's fairly recently that I've actually come to understand show business. Uh-huh. I mean, I understand, you know, that people, you know, they, they like for you to interact with them. I, I told, I'm, I'm the same. All of us do. It's, you like to have that person feel like you're kind of connecting with that artist or that person. But, you know, like so many of the acts, and I have to say acts, it's kind of like acts, you know, they, they, the, the show business element can, can really turn me off big time, you know. It used to turn me off really big time, you know, but now I understand it. I understand it more now. It's like, okay, I get it. You're actually famous because of that. <laughs> you know? yeah. that that's working real good for you. And uh, it's just, uh, they, they, they were doing that thing. You know, it's kind of like razzle dazzle, you know, that. Yeah. They're like the Kenny G of their time, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, kind of, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew a lot of guys in Kenny G's band, you know, and they were great players, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, just uh, the music just did nothing for me, you know. So, no. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I have I have so many opinions. Yeah. Sure you know. <laughs> <Speak> no evil. <laughs> this is really interesting what I'm seeing with Vincent Voiren. Vincent. Wow. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe what was happening on your screen there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It came kind of out of. of yeah. It was like, holy yeah. mackerel. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do every morning. Blurring the background situation, which you can put on your. Video. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a filter. It's a filter out the background. In and out of it. And it's like you miss. It's very cool, actually. It's kind of cool. I enjoyed that. Thank you. <laughs> I was telling everyone, I think you just got here, right? That's right. Yeah. I don't have a guitar or an amplifier here at the house. We're literally, you know, moving uh, on Monday. That's right. 
<laughs> but we did, can... Hey, did you end up selling the SG or did you hold on to it? I kept it. Ah, oh, good man. I'm glad. I really am. I, I used it on that last West Coast run that I did. And uh, it's a cool guitar, man. I like it very much, you know. And just over the last few days, I've had, I had my Epiphone Riviera. And wow, what a sweet guitar. I'm so glad I'm going to be getting that out to France now. All those guitars, um, the cool ones, they're all going, you know, uh, so, sort of mid midweek. Though, I can't believe how bright that uh, neck pickup is. You know, normally they tend to be kind of darker and really nice. On the FG? No, on the the Epiphone. Oh, mm -hmm. when you were playing it last week, you know, like it was, oh. God, it's so bright and clear. You know? So I had that on the uh, yeah, here. Yeah, remember last on Sunday you were playing it. I was um, using it. Yeah. Right on. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Time is a little warpy right now. Yeah. There. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, someone's about to say something there. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> but yeah, I must say, like, uh, up until I got my, I bought, you know, I've had that Les Paul conversion, right? So it's like a quote, you know, 54 that was converted to 59 specs. And the, um, the pickups in that guitar are out of sight true PAFs. I don't know what year they are, but it's it's loud. And it's the first time, like all of my guitars up to this point that I really used, and that's the Tele, the SG, that 64 SG, and the Epiphone Riviera. I set my amplifier. I could switch out those guitars one to the other and never have to touch the Dumble. So cool. And I, I got that Les Paul and suddenly, whoa, you know, it was a real, those PAFs. I don't know if they're 58 or 59. I have the real shit, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if they're 58 or 59. They couldn't be 57 or just a little, they're definitely too loud for that, you know, but um, it actually made it a little awkward for me, you know, because I, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to. I switch guitars. I don't want to have to make those adjustments. So, but anyway, I, I feel I was just sort of like counting my own blessings. I feel very blessed that I found that Riviera, you know, because I've played other 65s and they're not that one. And I don't know why, you know, and my telly, that treble pickup is a little meatier than most telly pickups that I've heard. And then the SG, you know, it's just got that kind of it's not loud just tone how are you liking your uh, prs man i tell you what i love first of all I, I love playing it i love sitting down and playing the guitar and paul just finally did some new shit to the pickups where now it's it's there and great I to hear that what great to hear that I, yeah. I bought one. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it will arrive next week. Okay. And I'm I, so happy. Right on, man. Where the are tone you? On, the tone of blues flying. I'm in Johnson. Venezuela. Is that Nat? Are you, is that you, Nate? Yeah. Talking? Okay. Nat Agosta. Yeah. Yeah. So let I'm me from know. Venezuela. Yes. So let me know. Okay. I mean. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Come back. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And. Uh, and we'll talk because I want to hear about it. I want to know what's going on. Yeah. So is that the first PRS ever done in nitro cellulose? <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, I think I think it probably is. That was one that. thing that always kind of bothered me about their guitars, actually. Mm -hmm. And it, um, you know, I just That's always cool. from that school at Les Pauls. You know, they breathe because of the nitro, and and you, and you got it, you know, and you had it on there. I, I thought that was pretty cool. Well, it was really you know working with Paul. It, it, is a trip he is a trip yeah. and, uh so i i would just speak the truth you know and i mean i'm i don't like i don't get upset <laughs> you know i'm not like saying no man it's got to be like this it's just not my style you know 
so I would just say, you know, man, I don't know. There's just something in this, that, or the other thing. And I'm, I, is this a different finish than maybe I would know about? And he's like, well, yes, Robin, it is. I'm like, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. so we've been having that conversation for, you know, about a year, babe. Yeah, since he first started sending me guitars and sending them back and sending me three guitars, and, you know, like we really worked on it. And honestly, that the, that aspect of the, the playability of the guitar and just like picking it up, hold it, play it. It's there. Pick what kind up, of string do you use on it? I use 10 through 46 Diodario. Straight up, straight up Diodario, no and YXLs or nope, just regular old ten through forty six on everything I've played in the last thirty five years. That's what I use, you know, on every guitar. How come only two hundred guitars, and not like the, having your signature like forever, <laughs> like this well, kind of one? The, it was uh, it was a test run. Okay, there will be more. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. I hope I don't have to sign them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I you, signed, sign all, you signed the yeah, first couple editions? <laughs> I signed all of them. Every one of them. Cool. You know, they just sent me and, the plates because I was already in Paris. And they just sent me the plates. and We just sat down and said, all right, here 200 we 200 plates, yeah. <laughs> signed 200 plates, one sitting. <laughs> wow. So, so oh, found on, uh, that's like holding on a house. <laughs> What's that? I said, that's like closing on a house. <laughs> Similar. <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, Damon, man, you're certainly chilling like a villain. Certainly am. <laughs> Where are you? I am in Canada. Okay. You've always been in Canada, right? I have for most of my life. Yeah. Okay. I mean, since last time I saw you, you weren't somewhere else. No, sir. I have been right. in the same place. All right. Anything going on with the music that you would be interested in talking about? Yes. <laughs> Nat's got you know, I, Yeah, I have like almost <laughs> all your CDs. Okay. I see there's okay. a couple missing. Yeah, well, <laughs> Just kidding. hear more. <laughs> okay, good. Not now I believe. DVDs. <laughs> well, anyway, um, you, you said in one of the call that you got all oh, good in rhythm guitar, like in your 40s. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to, once again, the, uh, the Inside Story. Uh -huh. I love the CD. And Tea Time uh, for Eric. Yeah. And you, you groove a lot there. So... Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you have a spectacular uh, rhythm guitar, and, and you were what? what Twenty was twenty eight, maybe. Twenty eight, I think so. Man, so and you weren't happy about that. Or, or for instance, when you listen back your first uh, work, what do you think about yourself? Like you said, do you do you like are hard on yourself? Like saying, "Man, I could have played a lot a, a lot better." Oh man, why did I do that? Or why did I play that? I mean, how do you how do you listen yourself like thirty years ago? Uh huh. Well, um, if I may address like that uh, tea time for Eric thing, for instance, you know, yeah. I've definitely talked about this in a variety of formats, but that song in particular, and it's the it's the only one like it, you know, really on that whole record yeah and i wrote that song basically i wrote the rhythm chart i i wrote okay. the, i wrote the the rhythm the the when i say wrote i, I mean composed i sat down yeah with the yeah, yeah sure made it up and um it was an exercise i i, wow. I was actually i did it you know sort of like i did it as an exercise to exercise my fingers playing certain um, chord voicings. Hmm. So that, you know, it begins with C over D, blah, 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 and then it goes to D13 sharp nine on top, right? Okay. 
that's where it started. And I was just practicing moving from this chord and learning how to get to the D13 <laughs> plus nine quickly. So it was literally an exercise. I <laughs> love it. Yeah, bang. And then the next part of it was to learn how to play uh, an F with a C in the root. Right, so C on the low E string, and then the the triad A, C, F, on top, on the D, G, and B strings. You know, that's A, yeah. C, F, with a, with that low, with that fifth in the in the root. I love the move, yeah. And then also to, to learn how to play E minor seven flat five, the way that chord voicing is. Hmm. So it, it was literally an exercise. I, I didn't necessarily, I wasn't necessarily thinking of it as writing a song. Wow. But it was cool. I liked it. And uh, so the melody came after the fact, you know? Awesome. And um I, I say that I tell this little story because it's it's interesting, you know. It's 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 an interesting way to work because how yeah. do you 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 learn chord voicings by using them, mm. <laughs> yeah. again and again and failing and finally getting there. And I still have a hard time with you know that E minor seven flat five because I have to put <laughs> my thumb over the neck and that's hard. How did you yeah. Voice that by the way. Pardon me. How did you voice that that minor seven flat five? Well, Remember? so it actually doesn't have the minor third in it, I think. It's a D triad uh -huh. on top, A, C sharp, D, little fingers on the uh, flatted fifth on the B flat. Okay. And then my thumb is catching the, the E root. Awesome. <laughs> but the third, the minor third isn't even in there. But yeah. Man, you should do a lesson about that. Okay. You know, for, for the rhythm, the uh -huh. voicing. Okay. It'd be awesome. I think I've done it somewhere. I might have done it with oh, True really? Fire. I might have done it with True Fire or something, but uh, 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 I would be happy to do that. I'll do it for you, Nat. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to do it on the Riff channel. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, um, and okay. the solo is the solo is spectacular. So, I mean. You have evolved so much as a player because, I mean, there is a lot of difference like 30 years ago, but that yeah. doesn't mean that you sucked. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. this is great work. I mean, it, oh, it, thank you. you know, so, but, but I see so much growth on your playing on each CD. I mean, we can listen that is Robin for playing, but the language it's like you change a lot. I mean, how yeah. do you how, how do you do that? Because by just doing most it, of, yeah. But most I, of the, most of the play the players play by habits. You know, I have a, a habit right. of playing the same league. I know. Do you see? Yeah. Do you sit down, grab the guitar, and and you say to yourself, "I'm going to play something new, something different. I want to change." It's like changing like a paradigm, something like that. Well, I do sit down with the guitar and try to find new things to play. And, you know, I, I'm not a big, I don't practice a lot. I, I, I always feel, I'm actually, I probably practice the guitar more now than I have in the past. And a lot right. of it has to do with teaching. You know, it's <laughs> kind of like, I need to up my game here. I, I need to be bringing something <laughs> new to the party, you know? But that's just a beautiful, you know, uh, um, encouragement, you know, to find new things on the guitar. But when I do, I find, you know, it, it's one thing. It, it's, it's, you know, one, two, three, or four bars long. You know what I mean? And yeah. then it's, it's a block of information. And, you know, so <laughs> when you apply that to the instrument, I, uh, I can't, I, I don't like, I don't like doing that. I don't, I don't like going, okay, now I'm going to play this shit. <laughs> so my, <laughs> I, my approach to playing has been, I don't like to play licks, you know, 
I do play licks for sure. Yeah. But I, 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 I let them seep into my playing, you know? I came at the guitar with more of an open mind, you know? And when I play, I like not knowing what's gonna happen next. And that's why I play a lot of slow to medium tempo music. You can't, it's very hard to do that at a fast tempo, right? Yeah. That's why my music is generally slow and medium tempo because I want the time. I need the time, you know, <laughs> yeah. to be able to find something. But so, so I will, I will work on these things to play and I don't do them unless they come up while I'm playing. And then yeah. I'll, I'll maybe fail. I'll try it and I'll fail. But my attitude was right. You know, yeah. I didn't just go play the thing, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, oh, the thing. <laughs> and, you know, you just sort of jump on it, you know, yeah, yeah. It's something like that. So it keeps the music always lively and fresh. It's not playing your, your shit, but you, you, you always are, you know, like no one's no one's, you know, really making a lot of stuff up on the spot. But, you know, it's, it's more like rearranging, you know. It's just more like rearranging things in a spontaneous way. It's like, oh, you know, that goes in this way and that goes in that way. Yeah. And, uh, the creativity, you know, it, it has to happen, you know, uh, it's um, in, in space. If you don't have any space, meaning if it's really fast, there's no space. You know, you need space yeah. to be creative, you know. So you might take a small idea and play it quickly, but it's a small idea and you play it quickly and you repeat it or something, you know, or you yeah. play it up a fourth and then you play it up another fourth. Mm -hmm. That's not hard to make that, that connection because fourth, 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 you know, same little thing, yeah. oh, you know, like something like that. And it sounds fast, but it's just a small idea, you know, that you're doing yeah. quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Robin, I have a question. Thank you. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, sorry. Um, you've said in the past that you, you don't listen a whole lot to other guitar players and more to sax players and mm -hmm. uh, you know, to, to have your own voice. Um, yeah. You know, one, one of the, my favorite records I've heard from you is like with Larry Carlton, Live in Tokyo and playing Burn and Burnable and those songs. I really like that. So although you don't listen maybe like actively, but are there guitar players that you played with that while you were doing these sessions like inspired you to to do things differently or just like, you know, to elevate you or things like that? Um, I, I avoid it, you know. Uh, I, I just avoid it. I, I, like it's a it's a choice. It's a deliberate choice that I make. You know, um, I will listen a little bit to somebody, mm -hmm. you know, and it might make me think, "Wow, they're using intervals a lot." You know what I mean? It's like it'll be you know, tonic fifth third. You know, like so you're you're making leaps instead of playing linearly. You're yeah. kind of Calvary, yeah. Yeah. Inter intervallic playing. And so I'll just take that, intervals. I don't want to know how they did the intervals. Intervals, that's it. That's, that's what I take away, you know? <laughs> and it's little things like that. It's like, wow, that person bends a lot of notes, you know? So bending notes, okay, yeah, bending notes. Let's, let's, let's investigate me bending notes. <laughs> You know, not how does he bend notes? I know that he bends notes, so it's like that. God. It's a, it's, it's the way that I've kept, you know, uh, uh, or I should say, it's the way that I've developed a style that's unique, and that's how you do it. You know, I heard of Eric Clapton. He said that he used to listen to harmonica players. <laughs> he liked the way he wanted to sound like a harmonica player. And Albert Collins, you know, the great blues guitarist, you know, he liked B3 organ. So. <laughs> Actually, you did open up for Clapton just recently, right? A couple of gigs in Italy, I believe. Yes, we did three shows. Yeah. I, I don't know if you've talked about it on the on the Zooms, but uh, I was wondering that must have been a, also a great trip. Well, it was a blast. 
it truly was a blast because, uh, you know, first of all, how, how often do you get to play in front of 15, 16, 17,000 people, you know? And it was in Italy, which is the greatest place on earth. You know? <laughs> and I have a good following there. You know, I'm, I have a good following there. I, it's, I, you know, I don't know if I've worked there more than any other place in the world, but it is possible. And I have, I'm my, my promoter there is a very good friend. And he's also Eric's promoter. And he's Paul Simon's promoter. And he's Joe Cocker's promoter, was, you know, Paul McCartney's promoter. He's a huge promoter. And he wow. happens to be a big fan of mine. So he's my promoter too. And he has been for, you know, 20 years at least. Wow. So um, anyway, Italy, you know, that was just the best place that I could have done something like that and walked out on the bandstand to a warm welcome. You know, I mean, they're a Clapton fan. So many of them are, are going to be my fans too, just because of the guitar. And um, I didn't meet Eric the first night. Uh, we went out and played. And uh, after the show, I think, after our show, just backstage, you know, and uh, his tour manager came back and said, hey, Eric wants you to, wants to meet, wants you to come say hello after your set tomorrow night and sit in with the band. And I'm like, cool. <laughs> so uh, I've met Eric a couple of times uh, in the past, but it was always brief. And this one was even briefer, <laughs> Where, you know, cause he was, he's very protective of his energy right now. You know, he went through the COVID thing and, you know, he's 77 and uh, his voice is not too strong and he doesn't like to talk a lot before a show and I get all of that totally but went back and you know said hello and it was like hey man thank you so much you know and uh so uh he invited me to sit in and ask me how I like the, the hall <laughs> I'm like well it's fine I guess I don't really play places like this too often on my own <laughs> but uh he was sweet and so I talked to him, chatted with about five minutes, and then uh, went out and sat in, and that was a blast. And I that's saw you doing, yeah, you looked like you were having a ton of fun in there. Oh, man. it was just a blast, you know. And they were all just looking at you while you were playing. That was just like super. Yeah, cool. it was sweet. And, uh, you know, of course, I knew Nathan East, you know. I've known Nathan for, mm. for 30 years. Sonny Emery, you know, I was on the road with him with David Sanborn in the 90s. So that was very comfort zone. And uh, everybody in the band was super cool. A lot of smiles, good vibes, good vibes. The whole, the whole scene around Eric, you know, cool people, you know, everything was cool. No attitudes, you know, and it was nice. So uh, the next night, you know, I was invited to sit in, but I didn't see him. It was just like, hi, on the way to the bandstand, you know, to play. And then, well, see ya. <laughs> So uh, it was bittersweet, you know, because I uh, couldn't really hang. And uh, at the same time, it was a blast. You know, it was it truly was a blast, I have to say. Just like to do a little bit more of it, you know. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. That's a great Somehow feeling. I think not. <laughs> Robin, um, your, your, Robin, your use of um, jazz vocabulary is obviously such a huge part of your style, obviously, and sound concept, and we all love it. I think it's such a, the architecture of your playing is just beautiful. There's just, like, the thing that gets me, there's just zero fat, you know, in your improvisations, and that's ultimately, I, I think, the goal, just... Hmm. But, but my question is, and you've already, I think I know the answer on it when we were talking about giant steps last week and you just mentioned playing usually mid or lower tempo things. But yeah. if, if let's say Herbie Hancock calls you and he's got a, a project with Jack Dejeunet and, you know, Dave Holland to do a really straight ahead modern jazz gig, mm -hmm. what well, would, would you say? Would you, would you take it on if it was literally, you know, straight bop stuff and would you what would be the answer because that would blow my mind maybe not something you want to do but it sure would blow my <laughs> mind you know oh no i would definitely jump on that just to have the experience even if they hated me afterwards <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i just like that like that hang man i would love to do that and they're all it always seems to work out somehow it always seems to work out because i kind of i know what i can do and i know what i can't 
So I, I don't try to do what I can't do. And so my, my playing is always genuine. You know, it's always from the heart. It's always, you know, like I, I play what I can play and I, I bow out and I'm supportive, you know. I mean, Herbie Hancock, that group you just described, they're not going to do straight ahead jazz gig. <laughs> you know, Herbie's definitely funk and I would much prefer that. You know what I mean? I mean, that that would be very cool, you know. Right. I was thinking like the the groups like with Pat Metheny, you know, that where they yeah. had that ensemble. It was quite a while back and, and such. Well, you know, would you ever consider just for the hell of it doing an album jazz based stuff, like really jazzy based playing or not really off too off brand? Not not really the thing. Well, I mean, it's just. Uh, it, it's not something that I would want to do. OK, you know? cool. not so much off brand. I mean, any any music is is good music to play kind of you know any 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 situation even almost even almost bad ones shitty music there's still something to do you know there's still something to well can i do that you know can i can i play this that the other thing you know whatever right so anyway all music situations are all i think fundamentally kind of all challenging and good in some way so i do have that feeling but uh, and yeah, I would say yes to it in any case, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> wow. You know, there's nothing like playing with the greatest musicians in the world, you know. <laughs> and, you know, I, I couldn't keep up with them in, on a certain level, but on another level, I could I could provide something, you know, and I, I would provide what I could provide. I felt like that with Miles, you know, and uh, Miles said to me one day, I was almost a little bit of offend, offended, but that's just, you know, some little weird ego shit. But he said, he goes, Robin, you can't play them tempos like that, right? You know, you just play what you play and then you bow out and that's it. <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I can play those tempos. <laughs> but actually, I can't play those tempos. I actually can't. And he, he, he nailed it. And that's exactly what I just kind of expressed to you. It's like, it's like that. It's like, you know, it's like, and it's been a good thing for me to know that I don't compete. Hmm. Not competing is a strength, you know. Was it difficult for you not competing? Was it difficult when you were young, a, a lot younger? I, I learned that, I learned that, you know, hmm, you know, probably around that period like when i moved to new york uh th there was an interesting quality about living in new york and uh, playing in new york and people used to come out it, it actually shocked the shit out of me but uh, there was a club i used to play on the on the upper west side uh called mikhel's and uh it was well known in the jazz community stuff actually got started there at mikhel's that's where they started just jamming and eventually it became stuff the group stuff. And Miles used to hang out there, apparently, um, in the 70s and uh, maybe early 80s. But in any case, uh, I, I became friendly with them and I used to play there every now and then. And I'd look out the audience and there's George Benson, you know, or I'd look out and there's Pat wow. Pini, or I'd look out and there's Michael Brecker. And I'm like, shit, these guys are coming out to see me play. You know? <laughs> wow. And uh, I think right around that period of time, and especially after playing with Miles, you know, I, I just sort of felt like, what do I got to prove? You know, Miles loved my playing. He was mad at me when I left. You know, he wanted me in his band. I'm like, all right, cool. I got nothing to prove. I got nothing I need to do any different. And I heard this from my Taoist uh, doctor teacher, also Chinese, you know, Taoist uh, person. He said the same thing. He just goes, don't change a thing. I heard wow. that from a couple of my, uh, you know, more spiritual kind of teachers. You know, it's like, just don't worry. Just be yourself. Just don't, just do your thing, you know. And my, my music never becomes complacent. You know, I, uh, it's always changing. Every record I've ever done in my whole life has been different from the last one. There aren't two that are alike. I mean, that shocks me. You know, I'm a blues guitar player. Yeah. So I like that, you know, just like letting the creativity, you know. I know 
I know jazz chords. I know the scales, you know. I listened to and played a lot of blues. And I so and Robin, just, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I have a maybe a stupid question, but by no going back to the to to Miles period, have you ever introduced your music to him and what if yes, what what was his uh, reaction? No, I never had the opportunity. Uh, yeah. But you want the two or just Man, had I been had I still been living in New York, I would have definitely kept in touch with him, you know. But I moved to uh, by the, when I finally started doing my own thing, solo career, you know, that really started when I moved back out to L.A. Oh, I see. So I wasn't seeing him, and he actually passed away, you know, like uh, right. the following year. He died in '91, I think. 91. I moved to L.A. In 90, I think he passed away in '91. Yeah, and I would have loved to have played the Tiger Walk record for him. That's a great record, one of my favorites. Thank you, me too. It's an instrumental yeah. record, and I know he would have loved it. I'm oh, sure. <laughs> I mean, he liked Hendrix, you know, everybody knows, you know, he yeah. was big time influenced by Hendrix. So he liked guitar, he liked guitar a lot, you know. So and and I think he dug it that I came more from a blues place than from, you know, the uh, more educated place, you know, that uh, uh, Schofield and Stern, you know, they were the two guys before me. That's and, they right. both, and he loved them, you know, but they had a lot to say. They had a lot to play. And I'm a blues guitar player. And I know a few things. <laughs> and I think he liked that. I think he liked that, you know, that element. You know, the, when, I, when I was talking about the first time I saw you was with Miles, and uh, I was expecting to see Schofield. Uh -huh. You know, my all my friends go, you got to check out this guitar player. You got to check out Schofield. And it's like, oh, okay. You know, I, I knew the album. You know, I knew uh, the album that he was on. Uh -huh. And you were on the, on the bill, and it's like, oh, well, you know, I'll have to go see Schofield another time. But I'm yeah. seeing Miles tonight, you know. But yeah. when I heard, when I heard, uh, when I heard Human Nature, your tone just like knocked me, knocked my face off. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it was incredible you know it was, it was oh, thank you yeah you know i had the dumbbell yeah i know <laughs> i was playing through this weird four by ten cabinet because uh the sound man miles's sound man designed these these speaker cabinets and he and used these speakers that had like a tin cone it was some metallic cone but with the dumbbell and pushing it it actually had this kind of cool sound i mean i wouldn't want it myself for my gig but in that context you know and the fact that it was four tens instead of two twelves kind of got the, the the sound down a little bit and a little more concentrated in a certain way and uh yeah i i like that sound myself that's that's the only period that you know where every I, I ever sounded sounded like that you know yeah, it was it was a great tone, you know. I, I, I saw I thought I saw you play with four twelves a lot, you know, back in the blue line. No, the blue line I always had the two by twelve. Was it always two twelve? I, I used I used Marshall cabinets sometimes. Okay. But that was only in Europe because I couldn't take my own. Huh. Every now and then I would bring the the I still do. I'll I'll bring the dumbbell head and I'll I'll pick up a four by twelve Marshall cabinet. Because yeah. that's the only thing I trust, you know. Well, I, I remember uh, you were at GIT and you were playing, I think, through a super reverb and you sounded just like you were playing a dumble. Well, thank you. And the super, <laughs> the super is my favorite amp of all time. Yeah. I've had quite a few. Still have one. <laughs> right on. Congrats. Yeah, it's holding up a, a, an amp over there. <laughs> well, you know, with Eric, I was trying to get my... Um, uh, my 100 watt little Walter head and 2 by 12 cabinet that's configured specifically for that amp. They're different speakers and they respond differently and together they're just beautiful. I've never done this before until Phil, Phil uh, Bradbury. But in any case, uh, you know, I was, I was sending that, that head and cab to Bergamo, which is where we started from Paris, you know, and uh, it was going to cost me 750 bucks. One way. Jesus. I'm wow. like, well, <laughs> F me, you know. 
<laughs> and uh, so it's like, okay, I'm renting back line, you know? Oh man, I was so seriously concerned and worried about that because I've you know rented back line and it's been pure shit, you know? So uh, my, again, it's my promoter. He knows me for many, many years. And he also, he, he would have done this for anybody anyway, because he's a class act. You know, he got me, you know, uh, a brand new 65 Fender uh, twin reissue and a brand new, maybe not brand spanking new, but clean uh, 65 Super Reverb issue. And so in my pedal board, I just, I have two outs. It's not stereo, it's mono. And, um, you know, into my pedal board, two outs, one into the twin, one into the super reverb. And I was in heaven. I like them Fender amps, man. I do too. The 65 free issue. I, I, maybe there's other good ones too, but those are awesome. I just like, you know, I've had a lot of backline amps and um, I always like cringe when I see those those 70s silver face master volumes oh. twins everywhere. They're brittle. So brittle. <laughs> Lord knows what they've been through, you know. Oh God, yeah, they've been through hell. <laughs> it's like Sonny Landreth, you know. Have you seen his setup where he, when he's like not bringing his dumbbell around? He's got like a pedal board. He's got a on his pedal board. He's got a, a tube amp. Oh. Um, that, I forget the company that he works with that he built some pedals with. Okay. And and so his back line is 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 twin reissues and he just uses the speakers and he sounds like Sonny Landreth when you can't go wrong sounding like Sonny Landreth you know <laughs> I'm uh, I'm writing this down and I'm going to call Sonny tomorrow <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well he says you know like you know when he's doing these fly-in gigs you know it's he can't bring anything so yeah mm -hmm. yeah there was a pedal made by uh there was a pedal made by um Seymour Duncan that was kind of that was the idea. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that pedal. Yeah, but it's not for guys who like a clean tone. It's for like shredder guys uh -huh. you know, who are going to have shitty gear instead of like a blues player who's going to have shitty gear. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't really work for me. But uh, yeah, I'm calling Sonny about this tomorrow. I appreciate you mentioning this. Yeah, I mean, he sounded he sounded fantastic. You know, it was. Uh... I was pretty impressed. I was like, I like to have an amp breathing behind me, you know, but <laughs> yeah, for sure. This is interesting. That, that, that sounded, it's, he sounded really good with his setup. <laughs> well, that, you know, as you say, it's not bad to sound like Sonny Landreth, you know? Yeah, it's not. <laughs> well, I can get the slide down. <laughs> so, any uh, musical things we could talk about? Anybody? Andy Gunn, you got anything, man? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm enjoying listening to all the stories and the discussion, that's for sure. Well, thank you. I I mean, where I'm at in my journey is I've been on your intermediate, kind of the first six or seven yeah. um, videos, mm -hmm. and I, I really am enjoying voicing in the... Um, 24 bar yep and that and that e the, oh. all, the, all the different all the different like like it was a bit quick for me i've you know but i've been i just stuck with it this week and and i'm starting to catch up and and get the timing and so that's that's kind of where i've been at but uh, all those voicings are, are right. awesome it's like like you talk about ear candy yeah and uh, oh, for me awesome. that's that's what i've been looking for so <laughs> ah, i love I, it thank you for those lessons they're great you are welcome. I mean, people that love chords, yeah, <laughs> that's the shit, you know? I mean, for me, I, you know, I learned the chords first out of the book. Otherwise I was just playing my Mike Bloomfield and BB King licks, you know? But uh, I learned the chords out of the book. And then it's like, hmm, what do you play on that chord, you know? And then I learned the scales. That's it. That's the extent of my musical education other than, you know, hanging playing being around other musicians and shit like that it's chords and scales and then it's like you know what do you do with them i really appreciate hearing that and you know you said it's the 24 bar blues right so it's the love and cup thing 
bat, 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 bang, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, I do. I, so I've been, you know, in my, when I was younger, I, I've, I've surfed and skateboarded my whole life. So I've broken my, my wrists a few times. <laughs> um, so, but uh, so I guess I do have a couple questions about like keeping your, you know, hand health or wrist health or exercises for that. Do you? Yeah. I mean, I, this might be a very basic question that is no. boring to some people, but oh. like, do you partake in yoga or anything like that, that keeps you healthy in that way? I do. And um, I'm just thinking if I could maybe share this with people somehow. Qigong. Uh, yeah. I mean, Qigong and, uh, and Tai Chi have been the two things that I've done over the years, much more Qigong than Tai Chi. And uh, I finally met a teacher here in, um, in Nashville. And of course, now I'm moving. Um, but I, I learned some things. And one, one of them is, is a tendon qigong. And uh, I'm just wondering if I could just share it, you know, somehow, mm -hmm. like, just send it. Does Kelly have, like, everybody's email? Yeah. I just got mine. Okay. I love that because I broke both of my wrists two years ago and I have plates in both of my wrists. Uh -huh. And cool. uh, I had, um, I, I had a, over a year of rehab mm -hmm. trying to play again. I was out playing out in, on the West Coast uh, last summer. Mm -hmm. My right hand went numb. It's like, man, this is not going to work, you know? Yeah. But I'm back to, I'm, I'm, I think I'm back to about 90% now, but I would really love to. Uh -huh. Well, Qigong is the shit, just period, for health. And the, the tendon Qigong, I was so happy when he showed me this. He said, normally I don't teach this right away, but because you're a guitar player, I think you'd appreciate this. And he showed it to me, you know? And it's, I'm, I'm going to see if I... Hey, Kelly, can we uh, send like kind of a group email to the dojo? Yeah. Could we send a video? Okay, I'll do it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Very yeah, cool. everybody, you know. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to make this note now. Uh, so, excuse me. Chi. Oh, I'm going to spell that right. Qigong. Vid. For. Dojo. Okay. So, I'll try to get that together before we split it might it might wind up waiting until we get back to france because we're finalizing everything here but i'm gonna i'm gonna try I, I should be able to do that tomorrow so anyway he's great he's just great and um yeah i think anybody would benefit from it so we'll try to do that <laughs> thank you yeah i'm curious did, uh andy where are you I'm I'm in Oregon, North Coast, Oregon. Okay, because it looks like it's daylight there. Oh yeah, it's probably my lamp. I have some pretty bright light bulbs <laughs> in it. <laughs> I'm actually in my little like garage office thing. Oh I'm okay. Yeah, it looks like a beautiful day, you know, in 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 Oregon. Are you in? Uh, actually, we actually Victoria? had about a, a week of rain, and now today's our first sunny day, so that's kind of nice. Oh right on. Same Maybe Astoria area, area by any chance. What's that, Astoria? Yeah, are you out that way? I'm in Seaside. Oh, Seaside, okay, yeah. I know Seaside very well. Yeah. Seattle was pretty sunny as well today, so which was also a nice little gift. I used to live in Jansen Beach in, in Portland. I had a houseboat there for years. Wow. Yeah. It was, it was, it was a neat place. It was like coming home on being on vacation every day, you know? <laughs> uh-huh. Hey, Roberta. Hi. Can you hear me? I can. Oh, yes. oh it's so nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm so nice excited. To meet you too. Where are you? I am right now. I'm in uh, New London, Connecticut. This is where uh -huh. my son works. Um, because <laughs> I'm going to a concert in a few minutes. <laughs> um, oh. But I live in Massachusetts, uh, near uh, Springfield, about two hours from Boston, and we're having a gorgeous autumn here. Uh-huh, right on. I assume you're a guitar player. 
I am a guitar player. Um, when I was younger, I sang more than I played guitar. I, I guess I've always been kind of good at chords, but I'm more of a blues rock player. And um, I did, I, I've had guitar teachers over the years. I, I love New Orleans. Um, so I've learned a few jazz chords as a result of being in, in some jazz songs. Um, my teachers have been into jazz and have taught me a bit of jazz. Um, so I, I know like all the, the C9 and the D9, I'm, I'm having a problem with the, the 13 sharp. I just still have to figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you just uh, put yes, your I fingers down player. and suffer. I, I'm also, fingers <laughs> down and suffer. <laughs> oh, fingers, I'm good at that. I don't know, I think I'm, I'm good at that. You know, I think all guitar players might be. Um, but I'm also, I started songwriting as well. Um, but mine are much simpler with chords, but I'm, I'm a poet as well. So I think that's the part of songwriting that I enjoy. So. Yeah, words. I'm really happy that you said that because we actually talk about songwriting a fair amount here, you know, on the mm -hmm. dojo um, hangs. And I, I thought about something, I've said this before, but somehow I, I, I kind of was inspired to, maybe say it another way and re or reiterate it in another way. But yeah, uh, words, you know, like loving, loving words is what's, uh, what I, I think songwriting is about. Like, yeah. because everybody has experiences, you know, there's plenty of things to say, you know, and you could say it in words directly to a person and just tell them something or, you could write a poem, you know, and you can write a song. So everyone, you know, has something to say. So words is how you say it, right? It's through words that you express emotions. So for me, I've just, I, I found myself doing this kind of first, like our, our Buddhist teacher, our first Buddhist teacher, he, he was very into um, elocution saying words clearly like it yeah. it's, it's like a discipline you know like meditation is a discipline you know and like how you pick up your glass is a discipline you know and how you express yourself is a discipline it's very you know buddhist you know and uh so i found myself being a little bit paying a little bit more attention to how i expressed myself you know like maybe i won't say fuck <laughs> you get yeah. about that word. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, not too saying. late. Too late. <laughs> I'm going to be driving Paris about saying that at least five times. <laughs> so, you know, it kind of started there, you know, with like just like, well, maybe don't say something. <laughs> you know? Um, but you know, especially like when I started uh, you know, writing songs, it's like you know, I started referencing, th reference, referencing uh, thesauruses and uh, rhyming dictionaries, right? So you, you start, you're finding words that you just, you, you wouldn't have even thought to use. You know, like this word is actually a better word to say that than that word. And maybe it rhymes, you know, because you can't find a word to say what you want to say that rhymes with that word, you know? So you go to the the thesaurus <laughs> and um so i started developing a love of words and and how they string together you know and i exercise that in in my speech if i'm going to say something i i like words and I, I like the way words work so it's affected the way that i speak and i try to speak clearly and i actually try to speak um, using proper diction, you know, and uh, the way that words might actually be put together if we weren't so glib, and we just we just throw sentences away, you know. So I've come to care about sentences and just how my sentence is structured. So songwriting and how I express myself, you know, have become more and more um, a natural, you know, they they they're simpatico, you know. And uh, the love of words, 
is a big, I think it's really important, you know, to, to love them. Like, man, I, I love that word. <laughs> or I, I like the way those words sound together. And I, I, I would like to express myself in that way. This is just something I'm, you know, it's a, not exactly a non sequitur, but I'm saying more than maybe you would have cared to hear. But uh, on the songwriting thing, you know, it's um, very helpful. And uh, tools, we have tools, you know, it's not, in, it's not all inspiration, you know, it's not all, wow, you know, uh, this magical thing. It's not. It, it, magic expresses itself through the ordinary, dare I say, you know, as you discover magic through the ordinary. <laughs> Something like that. That's, that's cool. That's very, you should write it. That's a lyric for a song. What's that? <laughs> that might be a lyric for a song. That might be a, you know, a, a it could be for a song. But that's another thing you never want to do in a song. Oh, try to tell somebody something. <laughs> oh, okay. You have to show. Yeah. Like, never want to give guidance in your music, you know? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so, but I'm, I'm learning a lot. This is a, like for a lot of us here, I think this is a big learning curve for me and I'm so honored to be here. Um, well, thank and you. it's a big learning curve and could add to my music. <laughs> thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> what about, there's a, go ahead. There's a uh, famous artist like, whose name I can't remember, but uh, one thing he said was, uh, inspiration is for amateurs. The rest of us show up and get to work. <laughs> that's that's very good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's like 10% inspiration, 90% perspiration. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that same kind of thing. But the thing is, like, here's what I found. Like, it's actually fun. You know, it's fun. It's like, cause you're, you are like, if, if you get into words, you, you are learning. It's you're, you're just, you're exploring a whole nother effing world. <laughs> you know, it's like, wow, I get to learn about words. This is cool. You know, and how other people used words, you know, the, the, uh, my ex-wife, um, was, uh, way into Broadway. That was the music. She's a singer, great singer. And, um, and an actress, and she was very into Broadway. So she introduced me to Roger, you know, Oscar Hammerstein, because he's the lyricist. Sorry, turn off your mic if you're playing the guitar. Uh, yeah, Rogers and Hammerstein, you know, famous Broadway writers. Hammerstein, he's the guy. Yeah. yeah. Wrote, wrote the lyrics. So I started listening to those songs, and I'm like, wow, these are really good songs, and listening to these lyrics. And Stephen Sondheim. She turned me on to Stephen Sondheim. I'm starting to listen to this stuff. And, you know, they're telling lengthy stories, you know, that are deep. <laughs> and it's Broadway. You know, like most people's relationship to Broadway is it's corny. It's like it's anything but when it's the real McCoy. It's a yeah. major art form, collaborative art form, ridiculous. Broadway is insane. So my I'm, favorite things is one of my favorite songs and one of my favorite albums by Coltrane yeah. too. And that is uh, Rogers and Hammerstein. Yeah, yeah, and they actually use the Lydian chord in that, that song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the melody, you know, I mean, would, <laughs> you can hear Julie Andrews singing it, singing that F sharp, you know, over uh over I'll have, to, I'll have to revisit to know what you're talking about, but I'll I'll yeah. listen to that. Well, Da 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 da. Then it goes to an A7. Da 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 da. Just fucking builds up there. It's so much tension. It's so cool. Oh, know, see, you know. tension. There you go. See, yeah. tension. Tension. Songwriting. Create yeah. tension, you know? Yeah. That's when you're really getting into it to, for me. You know, it's like, because most of us, when we start writing songs, either we're trying to pull something out of the blue or we're trying to express, you know, some, our thoughts you know, and <clears throat> really it's about storytelling, you know, and it, it doesn't have to be all your story. It can be a variety of people's stories, you know, just somebody's story that you don't even know that you learned about, you know. I mean, it's always good to start personally, but, you know, it's, um, it's, more, it's more about that, like tension and release, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, 
And that's, that's, that's in the music. It's in the words, of course, too. If, you're, if somebody's really great, they can do that. But that's not really what happens in Broadway music. You know, it's this marriage, you know, between a lyric and a great songwriter, you know. So you have great and great. <laughs> and uh, and it, they're telling stories and they're taking you places and it's moving. It's fast, it's slow, you know. Man, you know. Yeah, you should uh, you should put 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 that on some headphones on your flight back, you know, and 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 listen to like, like Julie Andrews and then Coltrane doing that song, you know. You can when you can hear that Libyan thing. I just think it's so cool, you know. I never would have gotten that, you know, uh, twenty years ago, but uh -huh. I've been studying for quite a while now. <laughs> I'm gonna listen to the Julie Andrews for sure. Yeah, yeah. Julie Andrews is bad. Oh, she was. She was great. And she's still <laughs> alive, right? I hope so. <laughs> I think she is. Yeah, I don't, I don't think she could sing anymore, but uh, I, think she had a, I think she had a little health issue. Yeah. Yeah. Old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. I hope I've enjoyed this hang very much, and I hope you have. I'm really sorry that I haven't had a guitar and an amp here. You know, we go back to Paris on Monday, and uh, next time we see you, well, it's next Sunday. Next yeah, Sunday. It's Western Hemisphere. 29th. Um, no. Uh, we can make whatever um, hang we're, we're having, but we're trying to do these ones at least to accommodate those in Australia. and. Well, every know, other and, week. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but I know you guys, a lot of you are in our... Uh, so, yeah, anyway. You it'll just, be the 7th. It'll be the 16th? Yeah. Okay. Next yeah. So that... So next week would be what, like Saturday on in the U.S. Sun, it's Sunday. It's yeah. Sunday. In Paris, it, but... it should accommodate. Yeah. We'll keep you posted. It's, our... Just keep 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 looking on the Zoom page. That's where I keep posting. Yeah. The schedule and it, it'll be there. It'll be clear. We're moving around a bunch in the next month, so you know. We're going that... to Iceland. We're going to Italy. Yeah. We're... <laughs> <laughs> Lordy, Mama. It's a little crazy. <laughs> A little, little we're, crazy. We're taking the computer wherever we go. We're taking the computer with us. <laughs> well, you know, I, I remember when you guys were doing this on YouTube, and I was uh, I would hang out with you on Sundays, and you guys were uh, <laughs> were doing so great with the computers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, we were terrible. We're, we're not. We're not very good with the uh, the uh, the computer. Yeah. But oh, I suck with technology. Just the <laughs> the YouTube live video stuff. We're not very good at. <laughs> no that was fun though it was it was really made, it made the lockdown for me you know it was the best the highlight of my week thanks man yeah very much we it, we enjoyed it too we might do it again we're just when we get a little more savvy yeah <laughs> all right everybody yeah it's right. been a pleasure yeah. thank you so thank much you. I, thank you very much thank you if travels thank bon you. voyage right yeah. beautiful okay. thank you have a good trip Ciao. bye bye, -bye.